Hey, can you hear me, Murray? Murray can Welcome you hear me? to Hemp Logic Radio, where we attempt to sift facts from opinions in this upside down world of industrial hemp. All right, welcome, welcome. We've got a great show for us in front of us. Uh, we've got Maureen West. Uh, she's the general counsel and compliance officer for Boulder, Colorado-based Functional Remedies. And the interesting part about uh, Maureen is that she was previously the industrial hemp program. Uh, she was the first one and served in uh, the state of Colorado. So, Maureen, are you there? Maureen, are you there? Maureen, are you there? Oh, my God. Maureen, are you there? I'm here. Okay, good. All right. We I, Episode never goes by a technical hiccup, but uh, I got you introduced. We got the introduction to the show in. Uh, so welcome to the show, Maureen. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so you and I talked a little bit this morning. Um, kind of give me a background. Give us a background on, on where you're coming, where you've been, and uh, where you're at. Sure. Um, well, most of my career I spent as a assistant attorney general for the state of Colorado, where I represented um, several uh, regulatory boards, um, particularly health health regulatory boards. And uh, so I have a, a long history in regulation. And then um, about in January of 2016, um, I became the uh, Colorado program um, manager for the industrial hemp program. So um, this was still in its very early stages. And, of course, um, I saw a tremendous amount of growth and development, you know, in the Colorado program as long, and the industry as well. And then um, as of March of uh, 2019, um, I had the wonderful opportunity of going over to Functional Remedies, and serve, I serve now there as the general counsel and um, compliance officer. So, pretty pretty broad range of experience um, at this point, when especially when it comes to hemp. That's kind of it's that's cool. It sounds like a smart smart egg there. <laughs> well, I work hard. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you though. Yeah. So you're you're uh, you know. I don't know where we want to go, but uh, one of the, the stories you were telling me earlier about you were being uh, one of the first, you know, the hemp programs in the United States, you were in charge of telling people uh, about when they, you know, when they, if their crops failed and stuff, um, kind of give us, if you've got a special story, you've got, I, I like those kinds of things. If uh, you could tell sure. us a story, sure. story about that. Sure. Well, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and preface it, you know, um, just having before I started in my um, position at the Colorado Industrial Hemp Program, as I stated, I was, you know, involved in a lot of um, I was either general counsel or legal counsel for all these boards. And I was used to a lot of really, you know, big issues um, in terms of, you know, um, people being either maimed or or um, death or, you know, a lot of different issues. And so when I first came into the industrial hemp program, you know, I sort of came in with that regulator state of mind. Um, we've got to make sure we're regulating this. And, and, um, and I do feel like there's obviously that's an important thing, but I pretty, pretty shortly after I got involved in hemp, what I came to realize is that, you know, these farmers were really, really trying to grow hemp and make a profit. And um, there's, like in most regulatory programs, there's just usually a few bad players and most of the people, you know, play, go, go by the rules, try to do the right thing. And I really found that in the industrial hemp program. So I, I really got to see um, that these were just really sincere people that were trying to uh, make a living and, and uh, make a better income off of what they hoped from, they'd get from hemp than they would from corn and soy and that sort of thing. So, um, and then I got to know the agricultural community, and um, so, you know, I, I started to realize that um, how, to, to a certain extent, how burdensome some of the regulation was for them, um, because they weren't used to it, they weren't used to being regulated, and so, you know, we had to really, you know, be in a process of trying to um, figure, figure this out, and figure this out with the industry, figure it out amongst regulators, um, figure it out with farmers. Um, and you know this is a brand new emerging industry, and there was, there was you know we were we were this was new, so um, that was definitely a big part of what I did. But the part that you know I I think 
and, I, and I've said this publicly many times, the most difficult part of my job was clearly when a hemp farmer's crop tested, um, quote, hot, which uh, is regarded as above the 0.3% THC threshold, um, that they had to destroy their crop. And um, it's, it's one thing to have all this in legislation and in rules and to, you know, sort of debate it and discuss it. It's another thing when you have to get on the phone and actually make that phone call to a farmer. Very difficult. Oh yeah, I, I can I can imagine what that what that meant, and and I can also it's just something that just came to my head when you were starting this, the the the, uh, the acreage was a lot smaller, so you had you had intimate knowledge with who you were, you know you you watched them, and you you were discussing with them, and it wasn't like it is today where you know there's a crew that runs around. And some of these states are staffed fairly well, and some of them have one person. Um, so I can imagine in the early stage, in the early stage of this, it was very difficult to have to make that phone call where somebody that you knew their whole situation, uh, hey, uh, Dave, this isn't going to work. Um, I, I, I guess you know, that would be of, tough. Some of the people um, I had, you know, had opportunities to interface with, a lot of them I didn't. And you know, at the end of the day. Um, you know, whether you knew them at a, on any personal level or not, um, the, the gist of it is, is that you're calling a farmer who, you know, spent, um, they had high hopes for this crop. They um, spent a lot of their valuable resources, time, money, you know, whatever, whatever, um, cultivating this crop. And, you know, there was, they, they were, really um it was disturbing because i think on some level they didn't think it was going to really happen to them um they thought they had done uh, in not in all cases some of them just went ahead and you know took the plunge and other ones felt that they had really done their research had you know really um knew the seed that they were buying the clones whatever the case may be so there's a lot of variables that go into into all of this you know um time uh temperature altitude all those kinds of things and you know just leaving it in the leaving in the field too long I think I think you're ta- you're preaching to the choir for anyone listening. I think that there's a lot of people out there, um, including myself, uh, that that got, you know, you do everything you're supposed to do. You're you're doing everything correctly, and still, you know, things just don't work out. Uh, that's the that's the frustrating part. So I mean, so segueing into you know why, what we're kind of wanting to talk about here is the the USDA and what your thoughts are on the USDA and the the new rules that are coming in, what, what's, what are your thoughts on some of this stuff? Well, um, I have a couple thoughts. And um, first of all, you know, I, I do like to, um, as much as I have a tremendous amount of empathy for the, the farmers and all the people that are, you know, again, putting their hopes and dreams into this and um, their resources. Um, I also really, having been in the regula- regulation side of um, for so many years, um, I understand um, that that mindset as well. And, you know, for the most part, these are people that are going to work every day um, doing doing their job. Their, their job is regulation. Their job is to enforce rules. Um, you know, there's there, especially, you know, quite frankly, you know, where it's non-political at the ground level, um, they're just really good people, and they're, they're also trying to do the right thing. And so, you know, that's kind of what I fell into. I was just a person who was in regulation that had always wanted to protect the public. Uh, welfare and safety, but also wanted to be really fair to whoever was being, um, you know, disciplined. That's kind of more of a word you use in in the health regulatory world. But um, so I think it's important for us to just kind of understand that, you know, there's real people on both sides of the issue and that for the regulators to understand that these are, in fact, farmers that are just trying to farm um, a new crop and trying to figure it out and that they're not all trying to, um, you know, grow marijuana illegally or any of those kinds of things. And then conversely, for the um, farming community to understand that, you know, for the USDA, they're really trying to figure this out. This is unprecedented for them. And so um, there's a lot of trying to figure this out that's going on, that's going on. And um, as far as the interim rules, I guess one of the things that jumps out at me is, is um, you know, they, they don't really, they haven't had to enforce rules yet. And that's why I think talking to those of us who have been in that position could be really helpful. In what, in what way? So they get a, what do you? Just, just, just to understand, um, well, let's just even put the destruction aside just in terms of um, just 
the reporting requirements. And um, on the one hand, you know, those can be somewhat burdensome for the farmer. But on the other side, you have to, if you're going to be requiring these things, you have to be able to process them. You have to look at them. You have to read them, right? I mean, it's not just a matter of them, somebody sending it in. And most departments don't have the kinds of resources uh, necessary to be, you know, completely thorough about all of this. And so it's, it's, it's a lot of work on both ends. And well, I, you I, know, I think we just was, need to work towards better solutions. So what there was, I don't know if you, you saw and you had to have that, that gentleman in uh, South Carolina that got arrested and then they came in and bulldozed his crop. Did you, did you see that? I, you know, I didn't see that. Um, so was it but who, I think who came in and bulldozed that touches, it? Yeah, that's touching what, you know, what we're, you know, so the state came in and, and more or less di- tilled it under um, and put him in jail. So that going to what you just said, you have all these, these regulatory groups running around and without actually, you know, so the intent, it's all intent. For me, it's intent. His intent was to grow hemp just because right. he, there was a mistake on a paper. There was a mistake in paperwork or whatever. doesn't mean you send the sheriff to arrest the guy, you know, look, it, it's a hemp farmer. We know he's growing hemp. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a paperwork problem. You don't arrest a guy and throw him in jail. I, I just, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, I mean, the lawyer in me, I can't, you know, speak to <laughs> you know, situations without knowing all the, without knowing all the sure. facts. So I'm not going to speak to that particular situation, but, um, but I, you know, I hear what you're saying and, and it's, there's there's a lot of truth in that and and quite frankly a lot of my experience I I also worked with law enforcement um, whether it be local sheriff offices or DEA agents and there again a lot of boots on the ground um, really didn't know the difference they didn't really understand it I mean this is again and it's not pointing fingers or faulting anybody it's just that this is such a um, emerging new industry and not everybody I mean we all know that. Um, there's just a lot of education to be done across the board on industrial hemp. And that's true of law enforcement as well. And I know there's been some, you know, efforts towards that in the last couple of years, which is a good thing because they didn't really understand it either. Um, so I think these you know, new states I agree. Are that as the states come out, as the states come on, I mean, we're looking at Texas coming on uh, Iowa, I think uh, there's Nebraska. You're starting to see all these other states that Florida, I think is this year these states are coming on online same thing the the law enforcement and those kinds of of situations working with the state ag departments they need to be uh working side by side and one on one not they do you know. they do but because I think, again these farmers they you know they and i think your point about intent is is well taken and um, anybody who's worked in regulation and in, in, as I prefaced, you know, I've worked, I oversaw or, or so for a lot of, uh, regulatory boards. And the fact of the matter is, is there's usually just a smaller percentage of bad players. So that's true of this as well. I mean, you, you sort of get to know who the bad players are and the people that are trying to gain the system. And I, I think because I think that, you know, that's kind of a mindset that regulators, um, you know, need to make sure that they understand and, and kind of accept is that the fact is, is that most of these farmers, the vast, vast majority are trying, their intent is to grow industrial hemp and they're trying to do the right thing. And, 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 and to sort of, you know, get over that hurdle of, you know, illicit marijuana growing. And that, you know, because once you can get over that mental hurdle, I think you start to view things a little differently. So, so, so the USDA and we, you and I were talking earlier. Uh, the USDA and the Kentucky situation. What do you what do you take? What's your take on that? Well, you know, I think that um, the bottom line is is that right now, I think that um, the interim rules that have come out, and again, and, and again, and I'm not trying to be political here because I'm not political. I can I'm very you know, um, but I mean, again, trying to understand both sides. Um, I, I'm not sure where the USDA, who they talked to in terms of when they started to have discussions and started to, you know, draft these rules. Um, you know, I don't know where a lot of this information came from, but I think they maybe took, um, looked at certain, like maybe even the Colorado program. I think, in fact, they did because I can see there's a lot of, you know, mirroring in the language and what, what the requirements are. 
but I don't know that there was a lot of a conversation about what's not working. <laughs> you know, it, just because yeah. the rules were implemented doesn't mean that they were working. And I think, that's <laughs> where, you know, maybe there's been a big disconnect. <laughs> There's always a disconnect. It's got guys, you're, you're rewrite, you're, you're, you're copying Colorado. We applaud that. But did you ask Colorado what was working and what wasn't when you draft these? And, and rarely, do, rarely is that the case. They just head, head yeah, strong in. And doesn't make a whole I, lot of I sense. They didn't, I'm not trying to say that I'm, you know, the authority by any stretch of the imagination, but I was the person out there in Colorado having to enforce these. And, you know, if they had, if I had been part of that conversation, I certainly would have shared with them. And, and again, it would have been to help farmers and it would have been to help them because, you know, this isn't a very good situation for them either. No, it doesn't, they've made, they've, it's not a yeah, win-win at all. <laughs> no. So then you have to back up. And then of course, in anything like this, and this was when I was in Washington state, you know, these guys, they would make a rule and it's like, you do realize that now you've just done this and this, and this is the ramifications of that. Oh, well, we'll change it next year. That doesn't help me this year, guys. No, not especially when you're talking about crop destruction. And again, having been in all kinds of regulations, that's a, that's a pretty extreme um, consequence. Um, you know, crop destruction. I mean, anybody who's ever had a doctor, a nurse, a therapist, anybody who has a license, if they can't work for a little while, that's regarded as very significant. You know, it's one thing to lose your job. It's another thing to lose your right to, to work. And in this case with farmers, they're losing a season. A season's a big yeah. deal to a farmer. <laughs> they count yeah. on that for their income. Well, I know that some states have put in there a little bit of wiggle room. As far as the testing goes, um, not a lot, but there is, there's a, there's some States. I I think uh, Oregon is one of the most lax, um, if I'm not mistaken, as far as, uh, as far as for this 2019 year, 2020 is a completely different animal, but um, that's just it. Another, another part of this is that uh, rules are changing by the, by the week, you know, and we're coming into another season there's all these, uh, you know, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? And then what is the USDA, FDA, you name it, they all have a say in what's going on. So it, it, it's, it can get a little daunting on what exactly are we doing? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like I said, if, if, if the consequences, you know, if the stakes weren't so high, then okay. But the stakes are very high for those who, um, you know, move forward and, and decide to go ahead and cultivate hemp. And, and of course, you know, all the companies um, that, you know, are relying upon that hemp. Um, and, I, and I know we've had a surplus of hemp and, and that sort of thing this year, but, um, you know, Functional Remedies is a vertically integrated company. So we're, we're you know, we're able to, you know, control um, and, and we have, you know, Tim Gordon, a great, you know, great um, chief science officer, great, you know, we just have a great team, um, farm team and and across the board. So we have more control over it than a lot of companies do. But, you know, they're relying upon, you know, a hemp grow so that they can sell their products. So this is this is a holistic problem. It's not just for the hemp farmers. Yeah. So where do you see this going? What are, what are, where do you in the next six months? What, what do you see happening? What what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know that's a great question, and um, I wish I, I I mean I wish I had a, a you know a crystal ball. I think I think that um, I think at some point common sense is just going to have to prevail, and we can't stop growing hemp. We know that this is honest becoming very quickly becoming an important part of our agriculture, and and you know our you know, it's got a lot of economic potential in our, in our country. So we can't, we're not going to stop what we're doing, but we're going to have to have some common sense approach to it. And, and I think when it comes to the regulators, they're going to have to, there's only so many resources they are going to have to decide, you know, who, who do we actually um, enforce and who do we have to, uh, we can't enforce because I mean, there's only so many resources when it comes to those sorts of things. You, 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 you know, so I think we're just going to, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I think in the end, we're going to have to have a fair amount of common sense here. Do you think that the states are going to fall in line with what the USDA says, or are they going to say, you know what, we've been doing this and use Colorado. We've been doing this now uh, longer than anyone else. We're just going to continue doing what we're doing, you know, and let the feds very, just kind of. Very, 
Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I actually, um, I was fortunate enough to be in a documentary called American Hemp. And when I looked at it, because it went up to, um, it was, it sort of, um, it, it's a documentary about the Colorado hemp industry for about a year before industrial hemp came off the DEA controlled substance. And the reason I raise it is, is because it was interesting to see all that was going on during this time when hemp was um, still regarded as, you know, an illegal um, grow. And so if all that was going on then, um, it makes me think that people people are just going to keep pushing forward. They did before it came off the DEA-controlled substance list, and I, I expect they will continue to do that. I remember I was in Southern California, and I remember when Colorado was doing – it just started – um, and you just go, what? What, what, it, what? What's the purpose? What's the point? You know, and now looking at it, you know, the guys that got um, into that, you know, if they did it right, if they did it correctly and they didn't burn any bridges, then they're farther along than anybody in the country. So uh, that's right. And, and, you know, a lot of times when I first started at the industrial hemp program, um, and, you know, the Colorado program, and I would go out and speak, it was, it was very difficult. I mean, people were very, there was a lot of animosity. It was very difficult to go out there because people were, you know, you're the regulator, you're doing this, you're doing that. First of all, I'd always have to say, look, I don't make the rules. I'm here to enforce them. Number one, I mean, you have a, you have a mechanism in place if you want to voice this, but not to me, (laughs) you know, go to your legislature, Um, you know, because I can't do anything about this. Um, and so, it, and it was also, you know, very much anti-regulation, but then I would remind them everything in your life is regulated. I mean, you go to the doctor, you go to the restaurant, you go to a bank, you know, you drive your car. I mean, we need a certain amount of regulation. Um, we just have to find where that common sense place is. Oh, you said the nasty word. Common sense. Let's not use any I common know. sense. Let's, let's I make know, this but I'm, way more difficult than it has to be because that's the only way well, government I, functions. I'm a big believer in it, and quite frankly, I mean, I spent a lot of years trying to, you know, make sure that I slept at night, and, you know, when I was done with the case, that I felt like it was a fair outcome, and I guess my message is, is that I I wasn't by any means alone, and believe it or not, there's a lot of regulators that that's really what, what they want to be able to do. They, they, they do want to be able to feel good about what they do, and sure. so I, I'm not going to give up on the co- – <laughs> I still believe in it. Maybe I'm naive, yeah. but I'm still going to believe in it. So we got the U- we got the USDA, and what do you think about the FDA? I mean, the, everybody's kind of – they think that the FDA is in bed with Big Pharma. You know, I'm, I'm using the, the – uh, No, I understand. The, uh, it's you know FDA's big pharma. They're gonna they're gonna crank down on this. They're not gonna let anybody use CBD in anything. Uh, and, and I just the cat's so far out of the bag. It's had kittens and they've had kittens. There's no putting yeah, yeah. hemp back in or CBD. You know uh, as far as that's you know from person to person. I don't see that being controlled. I see you know the FDA trying to control it going into the WalMarts going food, water, sodas, beer, you know, all the, the food products. I see them trying to control that, but uh, what does that do? I don't know. Is that, do you think that this is the, well, the FDA and the USDA are in cahoots or? You know, these things are complicated. I mean, when you work inside government for, you know, as, as long as I did, you know, you, you get to see, there's a lot of, there's a lot of politics at play. There's no doubt. Um, I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't think there's any one answer. I think it's complicated and, you know, usually the truth lies somewhere down the middle. And, um, so I think, I think though, that with all regulation, there's only X amount of resources and let's, you know, if let's go after the really bad players. Um, and if there are people that are making, you know, claims that, um, you know, that, you know, cancer patients are relying upon in, in, in giving them false hope. I mean, that's not acceptable and that's not acceptable across the board. This isn't, you know, hemp isn't brand new. It's another form of regulation, but it's not, we're not reinventing the wheel here. Um, it's, 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 
well, we are re- I mean, we've already got the wheels in place, and we just have, need to draw upon the broader picture of what does regulation look like, and let's put our resources towards anybody who's really abusing the system and and um, quit trying to, you know, um, think that we're just going to make this all go away because we're not. And I, I don't, I'm not saying that the FDA is sending that message, but it would no. be. Um, I think we're ready to move forward and say let's truly do something about the bad players and let's be let's understand that like, as you said the cat's out of the bag it's not going away so how do we deal with this? But again, yeah. you know they also have to have a lot of science. We we, we didn't have the advantage, um, the opportunity to have a lot of scientific studies. So because I've walked in both worlds, it's one of those things where I can I can kind of see all the different how complex it really is. But something's got to be done, obviously. I think it'll be cool. I see, you know, let's say, let's just fast forward just five years. You know, I think five years from now, marijuana will be legal throughout the United States. And then that's when you start, you know, people will say, well, CBD doesn't do you any good unless you have some THC. And and then, of course, they get into the scientific side. My eyeballs roll back. But I think that the, the research and development with the CBD uh, cannabinoid, the whole profile, the whole plant of, uh, it's promising. Um, you oh, you see it happen. So. You see it change people's lives. So you just go, well, it's only a matter of time before this happens. So, uh, you know, we, we flip flop back and forth. We start at the farming side and then now we're talking about the pharmacy side. So uh, this industry is fascinating. I, I just, I love it, but it also it drives me crazy. Drives me well, nuts. It's a double edged sword. That's what I tell everybody. I mean, it's double-edged sword. It's exciting and it's frustrating all at the same time. Um, So, you know, and as far as the THC um, issue, it always just strikes me as really sort of kind of just illogical because I I personally, and maybe there are some out there, but I can't think of too many agricultural (laughs) crops that you don't consume. I mean, that's why they're agricultural crops. And the FDA has already said that there's a, at least a certain amount of THC that's allowable. So now why would you want you – know, how, how could you or why would you consume an agricultural crop, which industrial hemp is, and then assume that there's not going to be any THC when the feds already recognize that there's a certain you know, amount allowable? So it just doesn't make sense. And so, um, of course, there's going to be some THC. And I spend well, a lot Col- of time Colorado. talking about that. Yeah, Colorado is, I guess, leading the, leading the charge for the uh, animal food. You know, if so animals can can uh, eat, you know, digest it, and then we can drink the milk and eat the eggs and and eat the chicken and and do all that after it's been fed uh, hemp. Uh, I I you know, being in the farming industry, I know there was uh, I was going to buy some biomass that was uh, uh, not ethanol extracted, CO2 extracted. And I was going to buy it, and it was at I'll just say 50 cents a pound. And the guy called yeah. me back and he goes, well. I just sold it all for seven dollars a pound. I'm like, what? what, Where did you? Who? Who bought it for seven dollars a pound? He goes, a chicken farmer, and he's been buying. He's been buying biomass extra, you know, uh, uh, CO2 extracted, selling and and feeding it to his chickens, and he hasn't had a vet on site for six months. He goes, chickens are healthy and happy, but of course, it's totally illegal. You know, if he'd got, you know, if he gets caught. It's illegal. Doesn't yeah, and again, sense. it's just um, there's just it's just you know I don't I don't know. To me, of course, in in at least in my lifetime, this is all unprecedented because you know everything's just come up so fast, and we, you know there's so many ends that are trying to catch up. Um, so, um, but I I mean I, it's not going to go away. I saw that in my first couple weeks when I got involved in hemp at the hemp program, and I I mean it it was very and I've been in healthcare, which was very dynamic, you know, always changing. And I got involved in hemp, and it was I, I it was just, you know, shocking really how <laughs> dynamic this is. I was like, yeah, I oh, hey, was we're that. not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> what year was that, Marie? Uh, 2016. So I'm going on my fourth year now. I know, you know, in what? hemp. Some, I, I said somebody the other day. I'm like, it's this is I'm going on number four, and it seems like it's I've been in it almost all my life. It just well, it, they it, say, what's that? they say what. They say hemp ears are like dog ears. So you know what? Answer. I will totally agree with that. I will totally agree with that. Yeah. You know, so, well, how long have you yeah. been in hemp? You know, uh, you know, three years. Okay, you're a veteran. I know. I know. I know. You're a veteran. It's, it's how fun is that? I mean, you know, and it's just, it's really. Um, <laughs> it's I feel just, very fortunate, you know. 
<laughs> oh, and then, and then of course you'll, you know, I'm a big link. I, I love LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is, is a, is an awesome uh, platform for uh, hemp. I know that hemp has a huge database inside of LinkedIn, but you'll see somebody and you know, right away that they're from the marijuana side because they've been growing up for 20 years. Well, yeah, okay, oh, absolutely. Technically, technically you've been growing up for 20 years, but you, the last one year you grew hemp and last through marijuana in your, in your basement. So, uh, yeah, let's be no. real about this. You know, the, yeah, the, no, the, absolutely. And so that's a farming, that's a, farming, but, uh, I do believe LinkedIn is, is one of the, their premier, uh, for hemp entry. LinkedIn is the plus, there's no better platform. It's been a so great opportunity. It, I've just started posting more and, um, it's been a great opportunity to, to network and to, um, and it's been interesting because especially, you know, I come from a pretty mainstream background. And so it's been really interesting, all the people that have been approaching me and inquiring about this, uh, you know, um, oh, I bet from your, from your, you know, from your healthcare days, they're, what? <laughs> you're, you're doing oh, absolutely. what? And, and, but they're very <laughs> interested and they're very intrigued and they're kind of like, um, hey Maureen, you know, how, you know, tell me a little bit about that because you know it's 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 a new industry and they can see my excitement, they can see that I'm having fun. I actually told a, an attorney of, that I saw last night that you know we've been opposing counsel, we've worked on cases together, known him for 20 years, and I was like, I'm sorry, but I'm having more fun than you. That's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, exactly. I mean, you can. Uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I will definitely go go with that. There's, we are definitely having a lot more fun than other industries. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So whether it's whether it's uh, bad, or good, it's always interesting. That. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, is is there anything else you guys want to you want to you want to touch on anything else while I got you on the air? No, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, there's, uh, you know, right now because of everything that's going on um, with the um, with the USDA rules, and I'm, I'm trying to. I appreciate this opportunity to have a little bit of a platform in that area because um, I, I think it's these are. I, I'm more about raising questions, you know, and so kind of like let's start thinking about some of these things and analyzing it. I mean, obviously, it's not work. It's not going so well. So uh, maybe we need to go back to the drawing board a little bit and figure out, you know, how to approach all this. That's, that's kind of my take on it right now. Yeah. And I, you know, and I appreciate that it's, it's where I come from. My side of the whole deal is on the farming side and, and then I'm, we get someone like you on the phone and maybe my questions aren't as, as good as they probably could be. So it's something that I need to work on, but, you know, trying to get people to, you know, when they listen, um, I keep listening to the podcast. That's the cool part about this is that I'm watching my audience grow and the, and the, uh, the listens are going up. And so you're like, okay, I've hit something here. People are look are tuning in. And so having somebody on the show, that's definitely not a, that they don't, you know, um, they used to walk the field, but they're not driving a tractor and they're not trying to figure out how to get this in the ground and then out of the ground and then get it harvested. Uh, but having somebody on that has a technical background, and and knows a little bit of the law is always fun. So uh, expanding well, no, my expanding it. my brain here. And I, I just want to say I appreciate the farmers. I mean, they were very welcoming to me when I came into the industrial health program. And I, I joke a lot. You know, here I was in my my suit, a health law attorney, and oh yeah, I'm running your program now. And uh, they were they were gracious. They were wonderful. They were welcoming, and um, they taught me a lot. And so um, salt of the earth, and we need them in our country. And um, <laughs> so uh, honestly, I really. I really um, a lot of what I'm sharing is is because I, I really want to see them um, benefit from this crop uh, and and have it stay in in the United States. We're t- we're all trying to figure out. I was in a meeting last night. They were all just okay. What is the end goal here? Are we, you know, big ag is figuring us out, and I knew they would. So 2020 is going to be the year of big ag. So what does that do for the smaller farmer? How can we continue? How can he make a living? just doing 20 acres. And that's the question for me. That's the question to everybody. You know, it's what are we going to do for these guys that are doing 20 acres and can they make a living doing that? Um, because big, well, I, guess, I, hope I, I knew yeah. they would, I, I, I knew in 18 that they were going to figure this out, you know, 
Um, yeah, no, and I'm <laughs> glad you have your show because they should be seriously they tuning in and hearing the issues. You know, um, they can kind of get a lot of education in a short period of time by by tuning in and and you know participating. It's a it's a conversation. It's causes a conversation, and that's uh, that's all I'm re- kind of looking for is to cause a conversation to keep somebody safe. I guess that would be a good term for right. it. Right. Um, well, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, that's in, that's for the interpreter. You know, figure it out. You know, ask the tough questions. What am I going to do? I I literally saw on LinkedIn two hours ago somebody tilling land that I, you could tell hadn't been tilled in ten plus years. And they're like, well, we're planting hemp this year. Oh, yeah. And somebody said, well, do you have, you know, and I, you know, it, it's so, and it's in one of the new states. And I'm watching this going, oh, man, it's like Oregon all over again. And then yeah. I, somebody said, well, do you have it sold? You know, is it sold? And he goes, yep, yep, it's sold as soon as we harvest. And I went, yeah. how many other farmers said that same exact thing this year? Yeah, yep, we would tell them all the time, get your contract, get your contract, you know, make sure you have a contract. But even contracts, but even well, contracts true, don't, I mean, that, that a lot of contracts fell apart, you know. Well, that's I, true, I've got now, it's, it's not know. just contracts. The, well, having a contract and having it sold, uh, not not the biomass, the actual end product. Are you building, are you doing oil, crude? Are you doing full spectrum? Are you doing isolate? You know, who are you selling it to and do they have it sold? Because if they don't have it yeah, sold, there you, go. you don't have, you're going to get out of harvest and you're not going to have anything. You know, they're not going to be able to pay you because there's no money. Right. So. No, I don't no, know. You're absolutely right. Important, uh, that's important kind of message. that's my no, word. Very important message. Yeah. No, important message for them to hear. Absolutely. Glad you're. I'm glad you're saying it because well, a lot um, of yeah, people they get so hear it excited. Though, Marine. Well, well, they get they don't excited hear about them, uh, you know, I, and they don't want to hear it. And you, there's only they get excited you about, about the that, numbers. You know? Right. Calculator eyes. They get calculator eyes. Yeah. And and you can't. And of course, you know, I just last week I got yelled at. No, actually, it's Monday. Yeah. I got yelled at by a guy on Monday because he's going to do a thousand acres. Oh, well, you know, are, are you sure you want to do a thousand acres? Right. Well, yeah. Right. Have you been watching the, I, well, and this is the arrogance of the industry still. Uh, I said, well, you, you've been watching the hemp industry. People are actually killing themselves. Well, they didn't know what they were doing. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I, I said, I can't help you. Um, you're, you're beyond my help. Okay. Called me a name and hung up. So, yeah. You know, well, like, and I sure wouldn't uh, want to be the po- person know. calling him to tell him he had to destroy his crop. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to be the guy. I wouldn't mean the guy that made a contract with and said, Hey, I'll give you this much per pound per percent. And then, you know, Oh, well, the things didn't turn out the way I thought it would. We're going to, we're pushed back 18 months. Can't help you. Now right. it's open market. Now you're, yeah, so there's no good in this whole thing. It's it, it's something that I've been dealing with since I've gotten into the business is the slow down. You know, I was, hey, I was going to do 2,000 acres back in 17 as food. That was my goal, uh-huh. 2,000 acres of food, yeah. grain. Oh, yeah. oh, gee, I did 70. I did 70, and I just sold it just a month ago. So is that it, right? it was almost three years old. You know, it just sat in the bins because, and I don't know where they sold it or what they did with it, but it sat. So we did 70 acres and it was a complete financial loss, but our goal was to do 2000. You know, gee, you yeah. know, I remember the seed guy laughing at me. He was laughing. You know, the guy's out of Canada. No, no, you don't yeah. want to do 2000. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me what, don't tell me what to do. I'm yeah. a farmer. I, yeah. <laughs> No, 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 I, I believe no, no. me. I saw, I, I saw those stories. I really did. I, I saw the heartbreak. I saw the stories. I saw the frustration, the anger. I, I you know, few success, some successes, of course, um, but definitely saw that end of it. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's been great. Uh, let's let's. Thank uh, you. You know, if you if you get a if you get a topic that you, you that comes up and you want to, you know, we want to have another chat about it. Let's uh, let's do that. I would love that. Let's Thank do that. You Just so let much. me know. I really appreciate it. And, no, no problem. No problem. I'm glad to have you on. 
So thank you so much. All right, guys. All right. Let's, uh, you're welcome. We'll, th- we'll talk to you soon. Okay. okay. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Maureen West from General Counsel uh, and Compliance Officer for Functional Remedies, and uh, I think that was a pretty good show. Besides the man, the, the technical hiccups in the beginning, I, I just I don't know how I'm going to fix that or not. But uh, we're getting better. I appreciate it. If you'd like to be on the show, hit me up at radio at hemplogic.com, and uh, let's get you on the radio program. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and uh, be good. <laughs>